Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Do you have any prayer request this morning? No. All right, do you have one more prayer request? Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. I thank you for this privilege to uh, come to your house and hear your word, Lord. And I pray that you would uh, uh, be with uh, Miss Esther and uh, um, just that uh, we would um, the comfort her, Lord. And I don't know uh, just um, uh, how she is sick, Lord, and she had a, a lot of uh, the pain, Lord, in her body, Lord. I pray that you would uh, give her peace and joy uh, just uh, through the word of God, Lord. And I pray that you would... Uh, uh, the, the, the touch your body, Lord, and she will get away. I pray also, here I'm a Christian, that uh, uh, the, the brother, Lord, and I pray that you would uh, help him to uh, just um, the, the, the perfect timing, Lord, and he may just come here, Lord, and, and just do your work. And I pray that you will be with the urgent, Lord, and then I know he's, uh, he's a senior, the high school, Lord, I pray that you would uh, give him strength as he practice and, and the music, Lord, and the study, Lord, and give him your wisdom. And I pray that you would uh, fill me your spirit as I preach the word of God and, 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 and you would just uh, help me to, to preach what you to preach, Lord. And open our hearts and we will listen and apply our lives. And thank you for your goodness. In Jesus, let me pray. Amen. The last uh, Sunday after, after I preached and brought the, the song, he, he came to me. He gave me uh, two envelopes and uh, he said, this is a gift. He said, it's a murio. And like to give two envelopes, and some, some, what is the summer? And then... There was the, I just opened the envelope right away right there, and then there was the ticket. And I went to the Ixan, you know, almost a month ago, and what happened is I got the ticket, two tickets in front of the school zone. You know, probably, I mean, they changed the law and they're like a 30 uh, kilometers per hour, and then I'm, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, rush through it, but you know, I didn't, I just, one day I got a two tickets. And then there was a camera everywhere, I don't know, I, mean, I came from the States for two months ago, right? And I look at it here, I got the tickets and I pay for it, the money, and I, and I just prepared here the sermons and here, and then the Bible says, God's eyes is everywhere. And of course, is, uh, we, we uh, just, um, you know, the, the, in the, in the, on the road and, and cameras everywhere, so we really be careful how we uh, the passing that the traffic. But you know what happened? in our lives, and the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord is everywhere. He's looking at us. Even the Bible says, and Ecclesiastes, and the Bible says in 12, chapter 13, and, and verse 13 and 14, and it says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. If that is the smartest man and the wisest man, that Solomon, and he said, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. The many times we, we think that God does not know. And we're just doing things, and secret things. People think we don't think that people know what we do. But the Bible says, and God sees everything. God sees our hearts. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. And here I'm going to preach on that, um, the Revelation chapter 2. And, then, and there is uh, the church of Ephesus. And here is uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and reveal himself and to these churches, speak to his churches, the seven churches in the Asia. The one of the churches, the Ephesus. And there was a great city, and it's a lot of, lot of the people that the buying things here, the big cities, and also there are a lot of idols. Oh, there's a famous of the temple of Diana. There was a big, big temple. And I remember when I was in China that the, near the Jilin State there, and then I saw that well, I, I visited with my, you know, the, the family. I visited the, one of the temple, just looking around that, and I saw that beside the mountain there's a big Buddha statue. I don't know, probably about 20 meters about that big Buddha statue. I mean, so big. 
But as I study this, this here that uh, Revelation chapter 2, the church of Ephesus, and Apostle Paul and started a church, if you look at it, Acts chapter 19 and 20, and there was a revival. The people came to Christ and get saved. Turn from their idols and turn to God. But here is Jesus Christ, our Lord, and speaking and, and rebuke this church. And you know what it says here, the verse 2, it says, I know thy works. As I studied the first word, and Jesus said, he said, I know thy works. He said, I know. When you hear this word, and Jesus said, I know who you are. I know what you're working. Is it encouragement to you, or is it just, wow, don't you know everything? Is, was he seeing everything what I did? The Bible says, and my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. And no man pluck them out of my hand. And Jesus said, I know them, and they follow me. He said, I know thy works, and there is a point number one, there is approval. And he said, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which they say are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and hast born and, and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. As I just studied this, the church of Ephesus, it said, I know thy works, thy labor, and thy patience, and thy works. And here's the laborers, and that means that the working on to get so tired. And then I thought about it here when, when the Peter, he went to the fishing, and Jesus cried through the net to the deep, and he said, he said, I toiled all night, but I had nothing. The toil all night, the working all night, labor all night. That is the church of the Ephesus. They're working so hard. Give everything what they got. And thy patience, and I look at it, I need the patience. I need the patience with my children. Many times I just frustrate as I look at my kids, and I look at myself, how about me, how about the God is so patient with me? The patience that means they've been trial, work at patience. They got the trials, and they, 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 they experience the trial, they pass the test, and they get through the trials. And the, the Bible said, then Jesus said, you have a patience. It's amazing. Do we have this, get through these trials? And I, you know, I'm here from China, in America, this pandemic and coronavirus, and hard time, the trials and the test of our faith. Do we passing this test? Or do we just uh, the struggle with this test? And here also, how thou canst not bear them which are evil. That means they did not allow the sin in their life into the church. They are they're fighting. They are zealously. They are fighting to evil. And, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. They got a, the sound doctor when they look at those people and they just test them, examine them, and they are real from God or not. They got a high standard and has found them liars. And again, verse 3, it has born and has the patience for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. So one more time, and Jesus said, Thou hast patience, and for my name's sake, has labored, and has not fainted. In America, you know, I, there's a lot of the churches, and I talk 
uh, just one of the pastors. I mean, he's got a big, big uh, church and the fundamental independent Baptist church, and they got uh, all kinds of ministry, bus ministry, and soul winning, nursing home. They got the, all the programs are working so hard. Every month they have uh, some schedule, some activities, and children's ministry, and the, the, you know, the preaching, the, all the kind of the conference, a youth conference, and, and then the Christmas conference, and everything. It's so be they're working so hard and bus workers they, they, they have a meeting and at nine o'clock and until three thirty and three o'clock and working in the bus routes and all day on Saturday gave their life for the ministry. But he said to me, But this church, our church, his pastor of the church, he said, This church has a problem. He said, We have lack of love. That's why in here in the Jesus Christ and look at the church of Ephesus when, when you mess eyesight and there was a perfect church and there was a successful church. You see the people filled with the pure, all ministers running. They are dealers, they are hard work, hard labor for the Lord. They have a patience. And they didn't get discouraged, they didn't faint it. They moved forward. And there was a Jesus approved. I know thy works and thy labors and your patience. And you gave your life for my name's sake. You, you didn't quit. In verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Left thy first love. The word is the first love. And I think that is, um, you know, it's just, um, it's like a first marriage. It's honeymoon state. You know, when you just be, when you have married, I've been married almost 12 years, and my, my beautiful wife, and you know, I mean, just remember that even they have a dating, and in a school, and here at the cafeteria, and they drink coffee, and just, just look at the faces, right? It's smiling in here. First get married, and it's just exciting in our lives. And the two sinners get together, right? Have problems. I don't know, maybe have a never problem in a marriage, you know? The arguments, it comes, and they forget the how we married. The first time we had got a wedding, I do, the moment. I want to give my life for my wife. I want to do everything for my life. I want to love my wife. That, that Jesus commanded me, and Jesus gave himself for the church. That means love your wife. Of course, and God command the wives to obey your husbands. But become selfish, get routine. The feelings is gone and get burdened. The same thing that Jesus said, I know thy works, your, your labors, your patience. Your hard working, your sacrifice. But I want to rebuke just one thing. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Do we remember, do I remember first time after I got saved? And I know I was a sinner, I was a lost, I was wandering. I know I didn't know what was the purpose of my life, and I thought just, uh, you know, you know, to get a job and making money and marry and just enjoy this life and just if I die, I just stop. But God showed me the, from the word of God, and, and I was sin, I was on the way to hell, and Jesus Christ, He loved me, He died on the cross for my sin, and He was buried and rose again from the dead. And, and then Jesus, the Bible says, the, while we were yet sinners, and Christ died for us. Oh, we would know that John is for us who loved the world, and how God loved me and gave Himself for me. The moment. The way I got saved, God saved my soul. And Jesus down the could have paid for my sin. The moment, the day. But let's just get through this life. And now it's come to church, it's routine. Read the Bible, it's not exciting anymore. Prayer time is, is, is hard. It's a, it become like a labor. You left, die for love. He didn't say you lost. We will never lost. But it's you left. 
Yeah, he is, you know, Jesus Christ, and, you know, he, 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 he reminds us that, that the first Mary, that had the young couple, how the exciting, and Jeremiah chapter 2 and 1 and 2, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, thus say the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, thou has went wanish after me in the wilderness in land that was not sown. Do you remember that day that you want to follow me in the wilderness? You loved it so much. Where is that love? That God gave Adam the perfect the condition. God loved Adam. But then Adam and in the perfect, there is no sin. And God had commanded Israel in every you know, of the tree of that, but he's the one, the one of the, the, the tree of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. <coughs> you know, they, they eat that tree, the fruit of the tree, e, thou shalt surely die. But Adam knew the one commanded in him, but he willing to disobey God. Sin. But when after Adam sinned and he hid uh, the, 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 the tree of the garden, he used to have a great fellowship with the Lord and probably uh, you know, the praising the Lord and you know, walking with him all the time. And now he was hiding behind the tree. The sin that broke the relationship between God and Adam. But when God saved us from the bondage of sin, but as we fall in Christ, if we will not be careful, the sin will the, the grab us. The left, our first love. And also, God gave us that restoration requirements. Verse 5. And he said, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. That's the requirement number one. Number two, repent. And number three, do the first works. Remember, therefore from whence thou art fallen. God wants us to remember where we fall, where we start living. That we are so busy with our job and our ministry here and we just Sometimes we don't even read the word of God in the morning. Have a the show the devotion with the word of God. We just go to work and do our own things. And sometimes, man, I forgot that. I forgot to read the Bible this morning, man. I got read it. And sometimes we forgot the devotion. We even we pray. We start our work even night and even the church sleep. And remember, man, I man, I forgot the reading the Bible. What did I do? Not just I have to read the Bible. I want to read the Bible because this is God's word. I love God. I need God's word. I need the strength from the word of God. But sometimes we miss that thing and then next day, and you know, the next day, and, and when the day, we, we don't know where is the Bible. Where's my Bible? When, when was the last time to read my Bible? And when was the last time I bowed my knee and prayed, and God, I need your help, Lord. I, I please, please help me, Lord. I need your help, and God, may lead me. I have this request. I need your prayer, Lord. I, I, I ask God. I, 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 I pray that bad God, by you, Lord, you will save my mom, my brother, Lord, and please save them and my friends, and your co-workers, and my families. And then, would you please help me to what I to say? That when was really, really blessed and we pray to God, have a fellowship with him, to talk with God. And God said, repent. There's no other way. There's no other, other way to go. You want to have a build a relationship with God, rest with relationship with God. And God said, remember where you've fallen, remember where you've sinned, and repent. Do you know what that means? Repent that means? Very, very simple things. And I go this way, and turn from that sin, and turn to God. Without repentance, there is no salvation. And I, and I hear the witness in here, and the, do, you, do you believe you're a sinner? Do you believe that Jesus loves you? Yes. Do you believe that he died on the cross for a sinner, rose you from the dead? Yes. Do you believe you're a sinner? Yes. Do you believe you deserve hell? Uh, what? Are you deserve hell? Deserve hell? 
I never kill somebody else. You know, because, you know, sometimes I lie and sometimes, you know, deserve hell. No. That guy in jail, rape girls and rape ladies and kill somebody, they deserve hell, not me. Do you think that person is ready to get saved? No. But that person does not acknowledge that for the wages of sin is that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I'm a preacher here, and I'm a wicked sinner. I deserve hell. If you do not have the heart, acknowledge where were your condition. Can you imagine that? You know, you know, I told him that one of the guys, that, that you're, you're in the ocean, okay? And then that your body is the boss in the area, so the area is coming down, your body is sinking, and you see that that big shark, white shark, and not just one, hundred sharks, you know, you know, swimming around you, you know, and then you, there's a helicopter, you know, I mean, you look at your condition, man, I'm going to die, what would you do? He knew that. What he's supposed to say is, you know, I was expecting. Probably you get that, when you look at that, you know, the helicopter, help me, help me, please help me, so I'm here, and I'm gonna die, the shark is gonna kill me, eat me. Because you know your condition, you're gonna die, right? Probably you're gonna help, ask for help. And he said, mm, no, I will not do that. Maybe the shark will bring me to the land. <laughs> man, there is a great more faith in man. He didn't, he didn't acknowledge that he, he was going to die. You know, salvation, you know what that means? That deliverance. That Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You must acknowledge you die because of your sin. And you ask God, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, this is not about repentance of salvation. This is a repentance of our sin to believers, to the church. God said, you've lost, you, 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 you left your first love, you remember what you've seen, and you repent. The without repentance, there's no restoration with God. You may go and so many, you may just give to the church money, you may just do more hard work, and it's not going to happen. Without repentance. Turn from the sin and turn to God. And also what the Bible says here, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and also do the first work. Maybe God wants us to do that. Just simply, just open the word of God, just reading. Just simply, just bow our knees. He so said, I don't have time, and he sees the Martha and Mary, and they explain here. And Luke chapter 10 and 38 and 42, but Martha was comforted about much saying, and came to him and said, Lord, dost not thou care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Be her, therefore, that she help me. And here is the Mary and Martha being and the, 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 the Jesus Christ and the visit that the Martha's home, the Martha, she was being probably prepared a meal and so that I was Lord and Jesus probably there on the apostles and cleaning here and prepare meals and, and the Jesus and the, and the Mary she was uh, sitting in front of Jesus feet and just listening and Martha she was her walking and she got mad and she came to Jesus. Jesus, you don't give up me. I mean you, you tell Mary get up and help me out. And Jesus said, answer said unto her, verse the 40, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. You know, in the, in the gospel, that three times that she been married, that presented here that all the time, and she was that, the, the, the bow down in front of the feet of Jesus. And here is the, here that the Luke chapter 10, and, and Mary was just listening. And we think, uh, you know, isn't it important just listen to the word of God and, and the prayer? Many times we are just Mary. If we're walking so hard, we do something here with our own strength, and that, that we run out and we're complaining to the Lord. God, I'm done. It's too hard. It's too much. I can't handle it. 
But Mary, when the word is time, and when, when, when Jesus and his death comes, and Jesus and the Mary, the poor, the anointing, oil, oh, yeah, precious anointment, and poor, and then the Jesus, the, the hair, and then the feel all that the body, and that is, you know what happened? And Judas, and he looked at the Mary, why don't you sell the oil, the oil and you know, the, the sell to the poor, 300 pence. Even though the one pence is one day of that, the working pay. So it's like, I mean, Judah, look at it. 300 pounds, the whole one year of the working, the money, you pull that thing with the Jesus? Why don't you sell that thing to the poor, give to the poor? How Mary, she knew that there was a death, the, code, the, 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 the death of Jesus coming and prepared the death of the Jesus Christ and put the anointment, gave her all the work, the one year of the, the wages and gave it to the Lord. Do you know why? Because Jesus, because Mary, she was just listening to Jesus. So she knew what's going to happen. Jesus told them, disciples, about death, burial, resurrection of Christ. And Mary was listening. And Mary was preparing. Gave everything what she got. Because she was listening. And we are so busy for the ministry. You are so busy making money. If God wants that, you to come back to the first words. Simply, you come to me and listen like a Mary. And get strength. The love of Christ strengthened. You, can, you cannot do your own. You do your own, you're working, you're going to burn out like a Martha and complaining. You do like a Mary and come and listen. True faith, you listen to the Lord, and it will lead to the obedience, to the action. The come, listen, have a fellowship with me, but you got to repent your sin and come to me. That is a Jesus Christ our Lord is speaking to that church of Ephesus, backsliding church. Outside looks like a successful, perfect. No, God sees in our hearts, but you need to have that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and thank you for your goodness. I pray that you will help us to, to remember where we fall. I pray that you will just help us to confess and repent of our sin, not just with our mouth, Lord. Just to remember what you did on the cross for me. Just spend time with you, Lord, to read the word of God. And have a heart of you that we will go to give our life for you, Lord. Because I know and we know you love us. You gave your life for me. I pray that you would give us the strength, Lord, and to serve you. I thank you for your goodness. Jesus, in my prayer. Amen. Okay.